Hi, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Adventures in Legal Land and the new release, Government Indicted, where we indict the concept of government that it is okay to lie, steal, kill, and cheat other people, basically violate the non-aggression principle, the very basic principle of do no harm. It's okay to, to harm other people as long as you call yourself a government while you're doing it. Uh, the idea that basic principles of right and wrong don't apply to you if you call yourself a government. And one of the uh, and what we talk about on No State Project is how these people believe that they could just write things th- write things down called rules for other people to follow and that they magically apply. They just it's magic. It, it's not. Rec- In fact, their apologists will actually tell you it is the application of law. Jurisdiction is not an issue of evidence and fact. It's because they say so. In fact, you know we we've got a number of videos you know regarding that. Uh, but we talk about this on the radio show, The No State Project, every Saturday from 4 to 7 Eastern Stand Time on LRN.FM. And uh, if you disagree with something that I'm presenting here on MarkStevens.net, this video, or on The No State Project, feel free to call because we're live and I do not screen calls. So if you have evidence to the contrary, step up. Let's hear it. Every Saturday, Eastern Standard Time, 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time on LRN.FM. So let's get to this. Let's really get you know, into the meat of this and talk about some evidence from some of these psychopaths themselves, some of these people who call themselves a government. And, uh, and the evidence that they have that the Constitution and laws of their fictional states actually apply to you and me just because we're physically located in the same area. So let's go down here. Let's look at some, some, uh, uh, some evidence here. This is from the Scott County Attorney's Office. Uh, not Pat Siliberto or Ron, who I've spoken with both of them. Well, I've actually just spoken with Ron, actually. And I believe I've spoken with William Strait, well, or he just declined to speak to me. William Strait is the division head of the Scott, Joint, Scott County Joint Prosecutorial Association. And uh, he wrote this in response to our letter. He's claiming to represent the fictional state of Minnesota, because we know it's not actually Minnesota because you're in territorial jurisdiction of the state of Minnesota if you are in Minnesota physically. So this is a current case, a court file number. Uh, We had left a message and emailed and then sent a fax to Mr. Bill William C. Strait, and this is what he wrote back to us. In response to your letter dated October 29, 2013, I will not be scheduling a phone conference with you and Mr. Stevens. What we wanted was evidence. We said, look, we'd like to talk to you for a few minutes regarding the evidence that the Constitution laws of the fictional state of Minnesota uh, actually apply to John just because he's in Minnesota. And we also want to know the name of any witnesses with personal first-hand knowledge you have of this, because that's what you're supposed to do when you're going to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. If you're just a lawyer, you're not a witness, you're not a party, you're just presenting the evidence. So you're supposed to be doing it based on evidence and witnesses with personal first-hand knowledge. Else, you're just speculating. But you know what? When you say that the laws apply to everybody, you are just speculating. So let's just examine this a little more. It's obvious why the man did not want to talk to us on the phone. You've heard enough of the call of shame that uh, when I ask you point blank for the evidence that the laws of the state apply just because I'm physically, you know, within the boundaries of the state, all they can say is, you know, well, give you circular logic back, no evidence. Well, the laws apply because the laws apply, or the law is the law, or if you're in my state, my laws apply. Yeah. So, he says, in response to your questions, again, we had two questions. What evidence do you have that the, that the Constitution laws of the state of Minnesota apply just because I'm in Minnesota? And what are the names of the witnesses with personal first-hand knowledge of that? So, he says, in response to your evidentiary questions, the laws of the state of Minnesota apply to everyone in Minnesota, including you. Now look at that for a moment. Let's just, can we get that? Let's see what we got here. Whoa, hello, that's... Okay, the laws of the state of Minnesota apply to everyone in Minnesota. Well, all he did was restate his opinion. You see, it's something that they, they, they don't like. You've got your opinion. The laws of the state of Minnesota apply to everyone in Minnesota. Got it. What evidence is that based on now? So you've got your evidence, and you've got your opinion. Opinion, evidence. The evidence must support the opinion. Well, actually, the opinion should support the evidence. Let the evidence speak whatever the evidence says, right? Uh, so here he doesn't actually answer it. But then we have what has to be the irony of the year. Now, mind you, all we do is ask questions. We ask to schedule a phone conversation with him and then two evidentiary questions. We didn't say a thing about making up our own rules or saying what rules we have. that apply. We didn't say anything like that. He just comes out with, 
You can't make up your own rules. Well, is this a little guilt? Is this uh, Bill, Bill Stray here realizing, oh my gosh, all I can do is keep repeating the same opinion back. Maybe if I say the same opinion a thousand times through, you know, through legal alchemy, my opinion will become evidence. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the actual thought process is. It's, it's definitely to avoid the issue of evidence because that's exactly what they do. They do whatever, okay? So you can't make up your own rules. That is exactly what these psychopaths call government do. They make up their own rules, and they say it applies to everybody. The evidence? No, it's not an issue of evidence. So it's pure speculation, backed by a gun. We say the laws apply to you, and we've got these men called cops, and they're going to kill you to get your compliance because it's the law. They're not smart enough to realize we're just making up our own rules and paying them a lots of money and giving them pension to carry that out. Uh, then we, I gotta, sh- we'll go back down a little bit. <clears throat> so the irony of the year has to be you can't make up your own rules coming from somebody who does exactly that. I guess if you have your own little military, you can make up whatever rules you want. As long as you have people willing to kill your victims on command, you can make up whatever rules you want. So here he really starts to twist his, you know, get into some real twisted logic. What he's actually going to do here is go putting the cart before the horse, because that's what logic is about. You know, there's a certain time, you know, it's a linear fashion here. Anyone who commits an offense in Minnesota is subject to Minnesota laws. Anyone who commits, well, shouldn't it be the other way around? See, he doesn't stop there. So, like, well, maybe he's misunderstanding things. Anybody subject to Minnesota laws can commit an offense. So if you're subject to Minnesota laws, then you can make an, commit an offense. I don't think that's what... So what he does is, this is why I got that second part highlighted. Jurisdiction is acquired over you because you committed an offense. What if you never commit an offense? The laws don't apply to you. They have no jurisdiction. See, this is, something that, you know, this is why I always ask that question. How do you prove that someone violated the code beyond a reasonable doubt without first proving the code applies? See, it's logic. You have to first prove the code applies, then you can prove that someone violated it. But to say that once you violate it, now you're subject to it, this is complete garbage. This makes no sense whatsoever. But he's got cops out there named like Rosga who will follow, who, they just take orders. They're not, suppo- they're not paid to think and critically analyze this garbage. But anyone who takes a few moments reading this and trying to and apply basic principles of logic and reason, we'll see that this, is, that this is illogical. You have to have evidence that the constitutional laws apply first, then somebody can be guilty or actually commit a violation of those laws. Now, I want to get down here. This is just ridiculous. Oh, you can ask the court. You see, the thing is, if you have no evidence to prove jurisdiction, you have no evidence the constitution laws apply, you have no damn business going and filing a complaint against somebody in court. Because when you, fu- well, when you file in court, you're certifying, even Bill, you're certifying that you have done a reasonable investigation and that everything is factually and legally accurate. And uh, obviously, if you, you know, just saying the laws of the state apply is not evidence that they actually do. Now, the second part of this is interesting because he brings up Officer Rosga. Now, remember... Prosecutorial misconduct is making arguments outside the facts and evidence. That would also include based on an incompetent witness. And we've already told him that Officer Rosga told me on the phone, yes, I spoke to Officer Rosga for about 15, 20 minutes. When I asked Officer Rosga, who, and you can see he's going to be doing the, a, the formal complaint, well, when I asked Officer Rosga, what evidence do you have to prove that the laws of the state of Minnesota apply to John just because he's physically in Minnesota, he answered, that's way outside my realm. He has no personal first-hand knowledge that the Constitution laws of the state of Minnesota apply to John. He's got no evidence. So Mr. Strait has no witness with personal first-hand knowledge the laws apply. All he relies on is his own, you know, ridiculous opinion. The laws of the state apply to everyone in Minnesota with actually, with absolutely no evidence whatsoever. So this is a case of prosecutorial misconduct. He is knowingly bringing a complaint against John, knowing the witness has no evidence. Knowing he has no evidence beyond a stupid, time-worn, legalistic, gibberish opinion. 
but he's going to do it anyway. But he figures, hey, you can always ask the court. The guy's on the same team as me. And oh, and I want to point saying, yeah, based on whatever theories you wish to advance, uh, pointing out that you have no evidence to show that your Constitution laws apply to John just because he's in Minnesota is not a theory. It is an observation. If you disagree, Mr. Strait, bring the evidence. But he knows he's safe in court. Prosecutors are generally not put to task on having to prove the Constitution laws apply because, hey, like they've said before, they believe it's a given. I don't believe it is a given, and if you're a rational thinker, if you're interested in the truth, you will not take anything on faith such as this. You will not take it as that, uh, or believe for a second that the laws apply just because the laws say so. You want evidence. It should be based on evidence. But uh, we'll follow this. We'll see what happens in court, if, since uh, Mr. Stray is so hell-bent on bringing this to court. We'll see what they have to say. And if you disagree with something I presented, if you think that you have evidence to prove that the laws of the state of Minnesota apply to everyone in Minnesota, just because they are in Minnesota, you're more than welcome to call into the No Stay Project. Again, we're live every 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time, every Saturday, on LRN.FM. And uh, present your evidence. I would love to see the evidence and hear about your evidence showing that the Constitution laws of a fictional state apply to someone just because they're physically in the boundaries drawn on the map by a bunch of psychopaths.